everybody, my name is Norman Harris, and we're at Norm's Rare Guitars in Southern California in Tarzana. Right off Ventura Boulevard, beautiful weather most of the time, a lot of traffic all of the time. is a 58 Strat that's in kind of remarkable condition. It's not only in beautiful shape, but this thing sounds and plays as good as any Stratocaster you're ever gonna play. 58, they went to the three-tone sunburst. It has the single ply guard. Neck is a little bit thinner than the earlier 50s, but it's a maple neck, one piece. This is definitely in the top few percent for a 58 Strat that I've ever had. I mean, there's very little neck wear. I mean, there's little body wear. There's a little bit of, you know, scratches and stuff in the back. But finding ones that are still in this kind of condition, because over the years, people played them. And uh, so this one is somebody who had it, took very good care of it, and was very much aware that it was a great instrument and preserved it really well. When I first got started in vintage guitars, um, I was playing in a band, and I'm mainly a Hammond organ player. And I had two guitar players, both of them played guitar and bass. Both of them had guitars, but neither one had a bass. So I said, well, I'll go out and I'll buy a bass, and meantime, maybe I can learn to play too, and you guys can switch off on guitar and bass. And I bought an old jazz bass, and uh, it was like a 1961 jazz bass. And uh, I was playing in clubs at the time, and I brought the bass to this club that we were playing in. And all the other bands that were playing there, all the guys wanted to buy the bass from me. And when I started, the word vintage was not even in the vocabulary at that point. It was just a used guitar. But there was a group of uh, really top players in Miami at the time. Jaco Pastorius was one of them. And they kind of recognized that some of the older instruments were really great. So it kind of got me into it. So this guitar is a Larson Brothers guitar. It's uh, called the Euphanon. Uh, Larson Brothers was a company that made instruments and they would ship them across the country and depending on where they would go, they would use different names. There's a Euphanon, there's a Prairie State, there's a Stahl, there's a Maurer. This was a company that was one of the first companies to do jumbo guitars. So this is like, this predates the J200. So uh, it's a wonderful guitar. Bob Dylan, when he first started playing, was seen with one of these Larson Brothers guitars. Uh, this one is a maple sides and back, but it's a very large body. It's, it's actually a little bit bigger than a J200, and it has an ebony fingerboard. Uh, some of them had a lot of pearl work. This is, um, you know, got pearl around the outside of the top. I've got a couple of these that have actually pearl all up and down the neck. They're really art pieces as well as um, great instruments. This is a fabulous guitar and it's extremely rare. Again, not many people know about them, but the people that do really cherish them. They're really fantastic. So things just kind of worked out where I was kind of subsidizing my income buying and selling guitars. And coming out here was the perfect spot to be at the time because all these bands were coming out. There were professional musicians that were in the musicians union here. And I got to know a lot of them. And I would ask them, do you have any friends that have any old instruments for sale? 
The first location that I opened was in 1975. It was a tiny 500 square foot store. Then I went to the corner of that lo location and that was an 1800 square foot store. And now this is a 6,000 square foot store. I never thought I'd fill it, but now I have no room. We have a warehouse with about 600 other guitars. We've got guitars in the back. We've got guitars all over the floor. And my wife who says, you're getting older, why you keep buying? I can't help myself, I just love this stuff, so I buy it. This is the masterpiece of archtop acoustic guitars. This is a Stromberg Master 400. This was made in around 1951. It's just a stunning piece of workmanship. The workmanship in an archtop guitar is so much more than a Stratocaster or a Les Paul or anything like that. They have to carve the woods, carve the top, you know, voice everything. You know, some of the top players of the day played D'Angelico's and Stromberg's. Um, these were like the boutique guitars of the day. So they were made for people like Irving Ashby, who played with Nat King Cole. Um, you know, just the, the best of the best got these, and a lot of these were custom made to their specs. So most of them were slightly different from the next. Uh, if you see them, uh, the headstock design and the inlay is slightly different per instrument. Uh, neck size, a lot of the guys would go, I want a big neck or I want a small neck, that kind of thing. It doesn't get much more beautiful than this. And the patina and the color of this blonde and the wood, and you know, it's just one of those ones where what's not to like. Bound for Glory, which was the first film we did with David Carradine. David was a friend of mine, and he said, listen, we're doing this movie. I'd really like the instruments to be time correct. So he came in, we chose a lot of stuff. It was done basically uh, in the Dust Bowl era. So we wanted to get stuff from the 30s and um, try to just make everything look completely time correct. At the end of the movie, David insisted on having a Mossman guitar in there, which I still have no idea why he wanted to do that. And then we started getting other calls for movies, like uh, I'm friendly with Christopher Guest. So when they did Spinal Tap, this is Spinal Tap, Chris came in and he said, I really want the instruments to be kind of cool vintage. And they had like Sunburst Les Paul that was flamed to death. And one of the jokes was, don't even look at it, don't even point at it. There was a seafoam green, uh, six string bass was the same kind of thing. And then there was Back to the Future 1 and 2, which uh, was another story. And there's a kind of goofy story that goes with that. They said the movie's set in 1955. What's kind of futuristic 55? So I suggested a switchmaster, Gibson, six knobs, the, you know, four position switch. You know, it was kind of a futuristic guitar at the time. Prop master said, fine, we'll, we'll rent it. And I said, well, you know, the guitar is like 1400 bucks. This was back in the 70s. And uh, I said, why don't you buy it? He said, don't worry about it. We'll rent it for 300 bucks a week. So they rented it for 300 bucks a week. It sat for 10 weeks at 300 bucks a week. Nobody even opened the case. The day they were gonna shoot the instrument, he flipped open the case and the director went, oh, no, 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 we need a red guitar with a whammy bar. So I said, well, there's a Stratocaster, but if you want something else, you know, you're gonna have to take liberties. So I showed him a bunch of stuff and they ended up going for an ES-345, a cherry red one with a Bigsby, which I think was a 1960 at the time. So they ended up running that guitar. They kept that for about 10 weeks. Then they called me back after they returned it and said, we're gonna need to do some touch-up shots, some close-ups and stuff like that. We're gonna need it for another couple weeks. So they could have bought the guitar for probably three or four of them for what they paid in rental. But I ended up with the guitar, I sold it to a buddy of mine. And um, he ended up selling it to this lady who now wants about a million bucks for the guitar or something, I don't know, you know. So 
this is a 1960 ES330 in blonde. Blondes are the rarest, and one of the reasons is they couldn't use imperfect wood because you can see right through the finish on these things. So they had to use the best wood on blonde guitars and knew there were more money, and they really had to select the instruments with the best wood to do them in blonde. This thing is in amazing condition. It's a dot neck. This thing has never even had a strap button on it or anything. This is one of the cleanest ones of these I've ever seen. What's kind of really cool about these guitars is they actually have some sound, uh, like a 335 unplugged, there's a block of wood that goes down the middle and it kills a lot of the acoustic sound. So this is the perfect instrument if you want to sit on the couch and watch TV and uh, play an instrument while you're a noodle while you're watching a show or whatever. So this last guitar means a lot to me. This was uh, an old friend of mine who I was friendly with for over 40 years. And this was Tom Petty's guitar. And this was when he was out on the road with Bob Dylan. There's still these little tape marks for his settings on the control knobs. Tom signed it for me. This is a 1965 SG Standard. So it's still small guard, still got the wide neck, but it's right at the transition. And Tom liked this guitar very much, but I had a Rickenbacker guitar that was a Rose Morris 360 double bound 12 string that Tom did the forward to my first book. And Tom wanted that guitar and he kept bugging me for the guitar. And I said, Tom, I'm not selling it yet, but when I sell it, I promise you it's yours. And uh, finally he called me, I don't know how many times, and then when he finally called me one day, I said, Tom, I'll trade you for some stuff that you're not using anymore. This is a picture of Tom and Bob, Tom playing the guitar. This is the top hat that Tom wore on that tour, and Tom signed that to me too. Well, you know, what's really happened with social media for us, and I credit that to all the young people that work at the store for me, and I'm around a lot of young people. I'm an old guy, but I was reluctant to get into it in the beginning, you know, because I like shaking hands with somebody, talking to them, looking at them face to face, and making a deal. But uh, we started throwing some of these videos up, and it just caught fire, and people are watching them like crazy. We now have um, a thing that we're doing, we're just getting ready to start doing podcasts. We've got about 10 or 12 of them in the bank waiting to go up, but we haven't put them up yet. And we have a thing called the All Guitar Network, which I'm really, really excited about, which is free. Go to the App Store and you sign up for it. And there's a lot of great videos on that, and it's an extension of what we're doing. So I've kind of come into this uh, you know, social media thing reluctantly, they had to drag me into it, but I love it and I understand you know, the worth of it now. We have people coming in every day from all over the world and uh, you know, I'm really grateful and humbled that people come here and a, a lot of the people in the stores, they consider them celebrities, which I find hard to believe too. You know, people want to take a picture with me and want me to sign something and I'm like, you know, you, usually my signature is only good on checks. So, I mean, but you know, it's amazing that anybody would want it, but I'm grateful.